This is a fun toy to play with, but when I first got it, I spent a lot of time trying to make it work. I almost thought it was either broken or impossible to make it levitate. In this video, let's take a look at it first, then I'll give you a few tips on how to set it up, and then explain how it works. This toy requires a few setup and calibrations. It comes with a spinning top and a few thin plates. I call them washers. The washers are there as weights. If the spinning top is too heavy, it will never levitate. If it's too light, it always flies off in every direction. You can add or remove washers to adjust the weight. I suggest to start adding a few of them at first, then try to find the delicate balance by trial and error. Every time you make a change, spin the top on a flat surface to make sure it spins properly before trying it out. The other part is calibrating the base. The base needs to be perfectly level to the ground. It comes with four pins to adjust the horizontal level. We need to start by turning all pins to one side. There is also a launching base. I wish the toy makers would have made it with edges, because while we try to calibrate the base, the spinning top constantly flies off all over the place. So I replaced it with this chocolate box to contain the spinning top. To calibrate the base, we need to spin the top and try to lift it. Whichever direction it tends to fly off to, we turn the pin or pins on that direction. Doing that will raise that side or corner slightly. This needs to be repeated several times to have the base leveled properly. In the meanwhile, we need to pay attention to the weight of this spinning top and balance it as well. So for example, in this try, we spin the top and it looks good. Maybe we can, oops, it just flew off to that corner. So we turn that pin slightly and after each turn, we have to make sure that the base is not wobbly anymore. And finally, we have liftoff. Let's figure out how it works. I took a small magnet and carefully ran it over the base. I could easily feel the repelling forces between the magnets and without opening the base, it's obvious that it contains a circular magnet with a hole inside of it. With the north on top and the south side is at the bottom. And the magnetic lines are basically moving like this in all directions. The spinner has a strong but a smaller neodymium magnet similar to this one. The north side is at the bottom and the south on top. When it's too far from the center of the base, I cannot feel any magnetic force. As it gets closer to the center of the base, I can feel a strong repelling magnetic force. Right about here, the repelling force is really strong. The smaller magnet is really being pushed upwards. And right about here, I feel the balance between the weight of the magnet and repelling forces. The rest of it is just the plastic structure to make it a gyroscopic spinner. While trying to levitate, at the slightest imbalance, it wants to flip over and hit the magnetic base below. 
Now, let's take a look at all the forces involved. The repelling magnetic force is pushing the spinner upwards. At the same time, the weight of the spinner is pulling it down. At this specific distance, these opposite forces are equal and cancel each other out. Because there is no perfect balance, the magnet inside the spinner wants to flip over from any side to hit the magnet below. At the same time, the fastest spin is creating a gyroscopic effect and wants to keep the spinner in vertical position. As long as the top is spinning fast enough, it holds it upright. I hope you enjoyed this video. Science is awesome!